During World War II, the world faced shortages of almost everything. Steel, rubber, fuel, and even basic protection. Yet, in the middle of that chaos, a little-known discovery quietly changed how soldiers fortified their defences. Yes, ordinary paint enhanced with a chemical additive that turned simple wood into a bullet-resistant barrier. This wasn't science fiction. It was wartime innovation at its most desperate and most ingenious. And the story behind it reveals how necessity and creativity often walk side by side on the battlefield. Allied engineers discovered a way to transform humble wooden structures, crates, vehicles, guard posts, into stronger, safer defences using a cheap and widely available paint additive. This wasn't camouflage paint or anti-rust coating. It was a liquid shield born from the pressures of war. By 1942, steel and armour plating were being devoured by the production of tanks, ships, and aircraft. Field engineers, especially in the Pacific and North African theatres, faced a serious problem. How to protect men and equipment when steel was impossible to spare? Troops relied heavily on wooden trucks, boats and outposts. Materials that splintered dangerously when struck by bullets. To solve this, Allied scientists began experimenting with chemical treatments that could harden or toughen wood. The breakthrough came when researchers at the U.S. Forest Products Laboratory in Madison, Wisconsin, developed a method to impregnate wood fibers with mineral and metallic compounds, especially sodium silicate and casein-based binders. When mixed into paint or varnish, these ingredients soaked deep into the wood grain and created a ceramic-like layer once dried. Soldiers began calling it liquid armour paint. Though never officially labelled that way, field manuals did reference silicate-treated coatings for ballistic reinforcement. The chemistry was simple but powerful. Sodium silicate, also known as water glass, filled the pores of wood and hardened into a fire-resistant, shatter-resistant composite. When exposed to air, it reacted with carbon dioxide and formed a tough silica crust inside the wood. This crust could deflect small-caliber rounds, absorb impacts and prevent splintering. British and American engineers also used this method on wooden boat interiors and pontoon bridges to resist shrapnel. It didn't stop tank shells, but it reduced splintering and slowed fragments enough to save lives. Sometimes engineers warmed the wood with field stoves or sunlight to help the compound set deeper. The result was a hardened surface that felt almost like stone, and it didn't require factory conditions. Soldiers simply mixed standard oil-based paint with liquid sodium silicate in roughly equal parts. After stirring, the mixture was brushed or sprayed onto wood. Once dry, another coat was added. The more layers, the more protection. The coating also resisted fire and rot, critical advantages in humid combat zones like Burma and the Philippines. It hardened wood reduced flammability and sealed it against insects and moisture, all in one treatment. For engineers in the field, it was a miracle formula that turned whatever wood they had into something useful for defense. Tests showed that a layer of silicate-treated wood could slow or even stop 9 mm rounds that easily penetrated untreated boards. With multiple coats, sometimes five or more, the wood became dense enough to rival thin steel plates in resistance. Soldiers used it on guard posts, ammo boxes, and even improvised armour on transport trucks. Even though silicate paint never became standard issue, it found its way into countless improvised defences and engineering projects. Today, it stands as a reminder that history's greatest innovations 
sometimes hide in the simplest places. Like a tin of paint that could stop a bullet, the story of bullet-resistant paint captures the spirit of World War II ingenuity perfectly. Soldiers and scientists didn't wait for ideal conditions. They built solutions with whatever they had. When steel ran out, they turned to chemistry and craftsmanship. The same concept later inspired modern composites and protective coatings in construction and ballistic applications. The idea of chemically reinforcing wood without melting, forging or laminating was decades ahead of its time. Today, sodium silicate is still available in hardware stores under names like water glass or silicate sealer. By mixing it with paint or clear varnish, builders can strengthen sheds, cabins and outdoor furniture against moisture and fire. Anyone building a survival shelter or restoring vintage military gear can recreate the wartime formula simply. One part sodium silicate, one part exterior grade varnish, applied in several layers. Once cured, the wood becomes more resistant to impact, water and decay. If stories like this fascinate you, the forgotten inventions that shaped the war, then you're in the right place. This channel is dedicated to uncovering the small technologies and field solutions that defined human resilience during history's toughest moments. If you haven't already, subscribe and share this video with a fellow history enthusiast and help keep these incredible stories alive. Because understanding the past isn't just about what was made,